Hi everybody and welcome to a tutorial on ProGrids. Using ProGrids in Unity is a lot like drawing on grid paper, except in 3D of course. So this makes it really simple to align and snap modular items together. For example, something like this little scene here. As I'm moving the items around, they snap together perfectly. Grids are also great for gray boxing with ProBuilder. For example, with something like this, I can really simply go in and just start building and such and I know that everything is aligned properly because I'm using like this the grid and it just works pretty much. So how does ProGrids actually work? Basically the pivot is snapping to the grid to the grid points for example here I'll move this around you can see this pivot is snapping right to the grid as I move it. If you are seeing something a bit different something that doesn't look quite right switch the the handle handle position, I guess you call it up here, to pivot. If it's showing center, you're going to see that pivot, or the handle I mean, at the center of the object, not actually at the pivot, and things will look a bit strange. Make sure it says pivot, there you go. And now you can see it snapping just right. To control ProGrids, you have the ProGrids panel up here. The first item shows you the grid size, also known as grid level, snap value, snap level, a few different items depending on what 3D tool you're working in or which, uh, which time I'm recording these tutorials. But it basically just means the distance between the grid points. So you can see here, as I'm moving this around, it's moving one meter right now. If I hit plus on the keyboard, I can automatically double that amount, that grid size, and now it's moving two meters each time. Plus again up to four, and subtract down. Uh, hitting the minus key will drop the grid size in half. So using those keyboard shortcuts is a great way to move between editing large items and then doing some detail work, just quickly hitting plus and minus on the keyboard. You can also click directly on the, the grid size right there, the value at the top, and set an exact snap value. And you have a couple other options in here. So you have the uh, major line increment, whether it's snapping on scale, snapping as a group, grid units, etc. A few items here. We don't really want to get into details. Things are changing quickly, and the best option is really to look at the documentation for ProGrids. So we won't get we won't get too detailed on that. Anyway, the important things are: so you have the grid size here, plus and minus keys, of course, and then below that you can turn on and off the visual for the grid. This doesn't turn off the actual grid snapping. So again, if I if I turn off the visual. This is still snapping, it's just whether you see it or not. Below that is the toggle that does turn on and off snapping. With that off, now items aren't snapping to the grid at all. And once I turn it back on, they snap. Below this we have the push to grid button. So if I turn my grid back off and now I move this around a bunch, using the push to grid will instantly snap everything selected to the grid, just like that. So very useful if you might have accidentally just as I did there, forgotten that the grid was turned off and moved some items around. Using the push to grid will automatically force them back onto the grid on all three axes. Below this you have the grid visual lock. So this is just locking where the grid is originating from. Sounds a bit odd. We'll look at a quick example here. For example, I have this item right here I'm looking at. If I have this locked right now and not moving, as I move this object, you'll see the grid just stays where it is, which you probably expect. I wonder why you'd want that to do anything else. But in case you wanted that grid to move with your object, you can turn this off or make it unlocked, however you might think of it. And now the grid follows your object. So as I'm moving this around, the grid is originating from the pivot point of the object I have selected. So that could be useful depending on what you're doing. If I have that locked, I can also move the grid origin around using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So here I'm pushing the bracket keys back and forth, and that's going to move that, the grid origin around. Below this, you can control the grid visuals in perspective view. So the Y grid, green here, is generally what most people will use most often. You could think of it as sort of a ground grid. And you can also swap this to an X grid, Y grid, or even a 3D grid if that is your preference. Again, the Y grid is generally going to be the most useful for everyone. A quick note on that, if you are viewing in any of the ISO modes, direct ISO modes, turn off the background to see it better, you'll notice that the grid visual automatically updates to show the proper grid for that view. So you don't have to change anything here every single time you're swapping around. Those will take care of themselves automatically and then in perspective, that's where that grid visual actually has an effect. 
So again, back here in perspective mode now, I can switch through these if I like. So ProGrids also has quite a few preferences that you can edit. You can click on Edit, Preferences, and then ProGrids. And we've got lots of great stuff in here everywhere from the colors of the axes, the opacity of them, shortcut keys, and one item that we will get into detail on, which is the snap method. So you can automatically snap on all axes at once. Let's do a little bit of an example for this as well, of course. So I'm going to move this out. I can see it a bit better. And also set up my snap value to something a bit higher. Maybe we'll put it at 2. So right now I have this set to snap on all axes. So when I move this, even though I click on just the X axis, it's going to snap on all the others. Let's make an even larger, a larger grid size so we can see that more obviously. Okay, once again, I'm going to click on the X and drag, and you'll see it actually snapped on the Z, X, and Y all at once. This can be preferable a lot of times if you want to always ensure everything is 100% on the grid, but many times you'll want to only snap on a specific axis. So you can change this by changing it to snap on selected. And now I'll turn my grid off just so I can move this around a bit somewhere right in the middle of the grid here. Turn my grid back on. Now if I click on the X and move it, you'll see that it snaps only on that axis. I can then click on the Z to snap it there as well. So that's a setting that you might want to test out, see what works for you, as well as pretty much everything else here. If you want to modify, a lot of times I'll find myself changing the opacity of the grid here just to work with different scenes and even the colors maybe a bit, depending on if your scene has a lot of these colors in it and you're finding it hard to see the grid. You've got a lot, a lot of options there, plus the shortcuts as well, of course. So there you have it. You now know ProGrids and you can use it to super speed your level design process, especially if you're using modular chunks or gray boxing with ProBuilder. Enjoy the tool and let us know if you have any questions, comments, feature requests, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. See you in future tutorials.